Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here in an opera house in Milan, Italy, the Teatro Lirico Giorgio Gabba, the venue of choice for Pagani to introduce their third model ever. The long anticipated, many years in the making, follow up to the Zonda and the Huayra. Today, we're taking a first look at this, the new Pagani Utopia. It's limited to only 99 cars, simplicity in the design, lightweight, with a V12 engine, also with a manual gearbox. It is a car that is about driving pleasure. Today, we're going to go through all of the details, explore it in full, the exterior, the interior, open up the engine bay and discover all about a car that has literally been six years to the point we see it today, ready to be introduced to the world here in the hometown of Leonardo da Vinci. Let's explore this then, the latest creation from Horatio Pagani, the Pagani Utopia. Naturally, there's a lot to take in when you have a first look at a car as special as this. New Pagani models are not exactly introduced on a frequent basis. The Zonda arrived back in 1999. That was codenamed C8. The C9, the Pagani Huayra, was introduced 11 years ago. And now we have the car that we've known by its codename C10, introduced as the Pagani Utopia. Their third model presented here in the theater in Milan, the hometown of Da Vinci, because Leonardo Da Vinci has always been an inspiration for Horatio Pagani with his art, with his design, with producing the cars like this. And what a car it is. Simplicity in the design, but distinctly Pagani. Elegant wherever you look. So many details that you start to take in. It's about lightness. No hybrid system or batteries. We have the six litre twin turbocharged V12 putting out over 850 horsepower in a car that weighs under 1,300 kilos. You have an optional seven speed gated manual gearbox, also an automated manual option. You have dihedral doors as were previewed on the Huayra R which was very much used as a development car to help produce and create elements here as a technical demonstration of the kind of things that are possible. We have a lot of exposed mechanics and analog elements in the tail lights, for example. We have the distinct quad exhaust tailpipe back there as well. But this is really a stunning car that you need to see to fully understand from the interior to the turbines and the carbon fiber that you have on those very large 22 inch rear wheels. We're going to go through it all though today, but come and have a quick quick look inside. Pop open the doors with those lovely door latches. They pull up and out to reveal this very beautiful interior. Analog in the way it's presented, no oversized digital displays. It is a lot of what Pagani represents, a work of art within and so many details and mechanisms that you can really start to see when you're looking at them a little bit more closely. But let's go through this, take a look in full at the design, talk about the mechanical side of it, open up the rear and check out the interior because this is really quite stunning. As we focus on the design, firstly, what's in a name? Well, back in the year 1516, the philosopher Thomas More referenced utopia as somewhere that does not exist, something of which we dream. It is therefore very appropriate to wear that name badge on a dream car of this nature, a car that radiates simplicity. And as I said, is distinctly Pagani with smooth curvaceous lines found throughout, aerodynamics discreetly hidden away within the bodywork. It's been through extensive testing and in fact is also globally certified with markets like the United States being incredibly important for cars like this. There are elements that are familiar and have been updated, modernized and brought into this car from other models we've seen before. But the idea is that it's timeless, that it will always look beautiful, that it's a work of art as much as it is a car as well. As we explore around though, there are plenty of things I want to point out because you start to notice more and more about it the more time that you're looking. The front clamshell opens up, pivoted from the nose, as we've seen before. The rear clam opens towards the back, and we'll see that in just a moment as well. We've got these familiar leather straps and latches with all of the most high quality buckles possible. We've got details here, like look at the fog light and the way that's inserted within that opening, of course, for the airflow at the front. You can see down here the mechanism for the hinge that pivots that nose forward. In fact, this is fairly reminiscent of the design of the Zonda up front as well. The single wiper mounted from this carbon fiber piece contrasting on this car against the pearl white that we have for the paintwork. I want to talk a lot about the wheels and tires as well, so we'll come back to those. You can see, as I mentioned, all of these aero elements, the car has been extensively wind tunnel tested, even, for example, the door mirrors, and look at the way they are mounted, acting as an aero foil with the mount point right from above. 
mirrors have always been a special thing on the different Pagani models. As we come around towards the rear, you can see how the airflow is managed in towards the engine bay. And then you come back here where you've got these active flaps across the rear wing mounted just above the bodywork, but again, sitting so naturally within it. These tail lights are a particular detail. You have the turbines within them, but they're actually floating inside this space. The top one mounted from above, the bottom one from below. And of course, back here then, the diffuser sitting beneath the exhaust system that you can just spot as it pokes out through from within. Let's explore the interior and you'll notice, for example, the opening here behind the front wheels is actually integrated into the door panel. This clip to open, lift it up, even with the Utopia logo inserted just there, pop open the doors where we are greeted by this wonderful interior space. And the idea here is to keep things analog, to keep things timeless, to make it about driving pleasure. For example, in the center, just look at the exposed mechanism of the gated manual shifter just there and imagine driving that with over 850 horsepower with a third pedal with the clutch pedal and again even down there the way the pedals are presented the dashboard has the traditional dials but with elements of them visible you can see straight through certain elements a small digital display in the center but the idea being to keep this timeless to keep it analog behind us we have the badge worn right there, the plaque that will showcase the number of that specific car in a cabin that features a lot of glass. It's very open with those two roof panels. Also the view through towards the back just behind you as well to be able to see some of that glorious engine bay. As we've seen before, the air conditioning vents that come up out from over the top of the dashboard, plenty of carbon fiber. Of course, the car is based on the Carvotanium tub. They've upgraded to even lighter, even stronger materials as things have moved forward to keep the car rigid, to keep it lightweight as well. You've got a single piece of aluminum that's milled to create the full steering wheel, finished with this perforated leather around with all of your controls and everything that you can touch and look at within this car feels of the absolute highest quality, as you can imagine it should. In fact, we have the key for it just here in the center to show you that shaped in the design of the car itself as we've seen before with the Huayra for example all of these magnificent touches including having somewhere to stow that away when you're out onto the road as well a few storage cubbies and things dotted around there are even seat or suit carrier bags mounted to the back of the seats as you can see there we've got these carbon fiber bucket seats finished with all of the leather and the different materials color matched to the exterior of this particular car and in fact from here one thing i'd like to talk about as well is the shape of the windscreen you'll notice how curved it is which you see even more when you're back outside the car as well we've got some switch gear up on the roof mounted very much aircraft style it's just a glorious glorious place to explore so to show you back outside what i was just saying look at the design of the windshield it's very unusual to have it curved around like that again creating a distinct appearance creating a different look for this car to open up the rear section then to reveal the engine bay you have this single very large carbon fiber clamshell pivoted from the back as i mentioned i'm going to pop open the door on this side because then we have the latches that you actually open up to reveal all of this i'll just do this side release the catch and then come round so i can show you on this side as well exactly how this works so down to the side just here we have the red leather strap to match the interior. The buckle is finished with the Pagani logo as well, worn at the side. We then pull the latch just here and lift this entire section up to reveal not only the engine bay, but also the carbon fiber storage boxes found towards the side. But have a look at the glorious presentation of that entire section of the car. We have the engine for Pagani by Mercedes AMG, the six liter twin turbocharged 12 cylinder unit, mid rear mounted, rear driven of course. It produces 864 metric horsepower, that's 852 brake horsepower, along with 1,100 newton meters of torque. And that's been one of the challenges to introduce a gearbox working with x -Track that can handle that amount of torque from the engine. But also back here, everything is presented beautifully from the whole component tree that you can find around the suspension, the control arms, to the exhaust system made from titanium that only weighs six kilograms, to the underside of the whole clam and all of the carbon fiber presentation that you actually find within, even all of the strut braces and control arms and everything that's around. To talk a little bit more about the storage buckets that you find just towards the side, as we've seen before, the way these open up again, 
all with these lovely, lovely extra details. Just give this a pull, pop this open. It reveals the storage area where within you have the fitted luggage presented to match also with the Utopia badging. It's, it's as much art as it is a car. The way all of this is made, presented, put together, it is just wonderful, magical. It is quite literally utopia. Then to close this back down, very delicately does it with this particular car, being obviously the show car. Pull this into place carefully, line it up, press it down to click, and then close up the latch around it as well to put that into place, sealed and closed. To talk about the wheels, tyres and brakes on Utopia, we have a 21 inch wheel at the front and actually a 22 inch wheel at the rear. You'll spot the distinct turbine pattern. They are APP forged monolithic aluminium alloy wheels finished with these carbon fibre overlays, which are dual purpose, both for helping with the cooling of the brakes and also reducing the turbulent air that you find underneath the car. Those are then shod in bespoke Pirelli P0 Corsa tyres. And in fact, the tyres are finished with a utopia graphic to represent that they are specific to this very car there's also a soto zero option and we have the brembo carbon ceramic brakes found within in fact this car gives us demonstration of two different styles of configuration we have the silver wheels here with those dark deep red brake calipers if we come around towards the other side of this utopia around this side we have the golden wheels over the top of matched gold bronze calipers within as well. Obviously this is quite a distinct design, but you can see those shapes, you can see the effect, and you can see how that would all work. Well, it's now time for me to take a seat on board Pagani's Utopia. We can start up the ignition and have a further look around. So carefully does this with the priceless show car, the first car that we're looking at here, brand new leather inside, as you can hear have a look around the skeleton style displays those side mirrors the aerofoils out there and the button in the center press once for the power to wake everything up we get the needle sweeps press again and it turns on the ignition and you can see a little more of this and just look at the details here we have our comfort sport race and wet driving settings some volume controls for your media and your infotainment but it's all about the switch gear, the presentation of the climate control, and of course, about this, about the manual shifter, about the feel as you slot that through the gated manual gearbox. It actually feels special, even just giving this a go. That's first, dog leg down to the bottom left. Wow, second, third, and the exposed nature of all of this. Then in the center, few more controls, your mirrors, exhaust control, and your toggle to go through some further settings and your lights. Everything inside here is magical. It is literally utopia. This is from a dream. Up top are your light controls. The SC is actually up here as well. Traction control. We're looking at the carbon fiber of the carbotanium tub all around us. Carbon everywhere that you could possibly look. Small details and design features around the tunnel, of course, all of the finest metals and materials to really give that ultimate presentation. And a fun thing, in fact, when you stop the car is the goodbye sound. That sound is actually composed by Horatio with the Milan Orchestra who are going to be on this very stage when this car is presented. Both part of the car with its goodbye sound, but also part of its market introduction here at the Teatro Lirico Giorgio Gaba. The plan then is for the 99 units of the initial C10, the Utopia, the car that we see here. I imagine there will be future variants, perhaps a BC, more track focused version, perhaps a Roadster to come as well. But I tell you what, to look at this, and the intricate details throughout the entire car and to understand a bit more of the story behind it and to have known the team from Pagani, of course, for many years and to have seen the cars evolve, to know what this is about. It's much more than just a car. It is the feeling, it is the emotion, it is creating something that directly matches the request from customers to be light, to be simple, to be about driving pleasure and driving emotion, to have a manual gearbox with a V12 engine in the modern era 
is something quite extraordinary. And to be able to take in more about this, and of course, I'm just scratching on the surface at a quick look here ahead of the introduction where it's going to be presented right here. I believe Horatio is even going to be on the piano as the car is introduced in front of the Milan Orchestra here in the city of Da Vinci. It's special. It's been many years in the making, but it is something that no doubt the team are very proud of, rightfully so, completely deserved. Yeah, what a day. This is Utopia, the Pagani Utopia. So thank you very much for joining me for a first look. Hopefully in the not too distant future, there'll be an opportunity to share even more with you about Pagani's third model. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.